I got my YouTube official artist tick and in this video I'm going to show you how to get yours as well as walk you through what it's all about. So if that sounds good to you, please stick around. Hey guys, Stephen here, aka Mrs. DJ, with another video for the DIY Musician Guide. If you're new to the channel, I make videos just like this one where I share tips and tricks to help fellow musicians get their music out there to new ears. So if that sounds good to you, please like and subscribe to the channel. Let's get on with it. So a while back now, I made a video all about how to get your YouTube official artist channel. But when I was trying to do it, I got knocked back several times and it was basically just a massive headache. But now I've gone and done it for my band, Wired to Follow, so you can go over and check that out. I've got that infamous tick. So how did I do it? Well, let's quickly go over the eligibility requirements to get your YouTube channel tick. And then I hit you with the revelation that made this process super easy. <laughs> So number one, you just have to own and operate a YouTube channel that represents one artist or band. Presumably you already have this if you're wanting your channel to be converted. Number two, have at least three official releases on YouTube delivered and distributed by a music distribution partner. This is the kicker really, as doing this ensures you'll get those topic channels that will eventually get merged into your official artist channel. Just make sure you've selected to be on the Google Play or YouTube music stores. Again, number three, have no policy violations on your channel. You get what this means really, just don't be naughty and have strikes, etc. So the last time I went through all of this, I was told I needed art tracks on my channel, which I consider to be, you know, you know, music video tracks with just the artwork. They're not that, they're actually way more complicated than that and something that, well, YouTube eventually told me in an email that our distributors handle. It was then that the penny dropped. Well, that and the fact it plainly says here, if you work with a label, digital distributor, or have a partner manager, get in touch with them to get an official artist channel. If you follow this channel, you might know that I recently moved music distributors. I was on Ditto Music and I moved over to DistroKid. Now, when all of that was complete, I found this magical page that enabled me to link my artist account. I then shortly received an email from YouTube informing me about all the changes that will take place, namely the merge of channels channels my music appears on, hallelujah. So if you're looking to get your official artist channel and you've met all of the other requirements I've mentioned before, then just go and check your distributor account page. If there isn't a magical select button like I've just showed you on mine, then just email your distributor and ask them about it. But what, Stephen, may you ask, is the point of an official artist channel? Is it just for that tick? Well, there is a nice tick, but what are the pros and cons to it? I'm glad you asked. Let's go through the features. Okay, number one, organized content. If you look at my band's channel, you'll notice I have two rows there named music, videos, and albums. I didn't add any of these. I can't actually even remove them. These are auto-generated playlists of all of my official music content. They're apparently organized by popularity and date. One thing to note here is that they have ads on them as well, which I presume basically are making money for me through my distributor, which is, you know, pretty cool. This channel isn't actually monetized at the moment as it doesn't hit YouTube's requirements yet. So this is a good incentive to have this on the channel. If you're not happy with what the music videos tab is displaying, you can actually jump in and edit it. You can't do anything with the albums row, but you can move them both about. Okay, number two, search discovery. When somebody searches for your music on YouTube, they should now see a watch card on the right, which links directly to the channel. My one isn't appearing as yet for some reason, but I think that's maybe because it's quite new, I don't know. If you do a search for, say, The Beatles, you'll see what I mean. That's a pretty good example. You, you, everyone knows who The Beatles are. I like this as it'll help prevent somebody going to the wrong channel when they're looking for you especially now if they're searching for specific tracks and they can see them on the right. 
Okay, number three, top shelf promotion. Now, I'm pretty sure we've always had this feature, but maybe it just went away with the new design. Basically, you can choose a video to appear right at the top, which will automatically play when somebody visits or returns to the channel. This is obviously a great place to put content you want people to see first, like a new single or something that works as a sort of introduction to your music or the channel. Okay, number four, YouTube analytics for artists. You'll now get access to analytics across, not just for the videos you've uploaded, but also for the videos uploaded by your distributor or label. I've noticed some of the changes haven't taken place for me yet, as you're supposed to see some specific music catered labels in there, such as top songs. It might just be the fact that, you know, I don't get that much traffic on this channel as yet. Anyway, one last thing to note here is that you can also get this on your mobile uh, app, which is the Mobile Creator Studio app, in a special artist analytics section, which is pretty cool, but again, just pretty dead for me at the moment. Okay, number five, profiles. The profile section is actually quite fun. Now you can add a proper profile image, a name, which you're going to keep the same, let's just face it, you're not going to change the name that often are you? A biography and some gallery photos for your account. These will appear in numerous places such as the YouTube music app, playlist and search, although I just mentioned before nothing's coming up for me just yet. The required image size will pop up if you just click on the little question mark next to the profile image. This is actually worth mentioning because the main profile image has to be pretty big at a whopping 5120 times 2880 pixels. So it's got to be big just like the channel art. Another thing to note is that the biography section tip is to not use any content that will go out of date, you know, such as any upcoming gigs or releases. It also mentions not using any hate speech, which I really hope is common sense, but you never know. Number six, concert tickets. If we look at our YouTube dashboard, you can see we now have a concert tab, which is great if you're in the US. That's right, this is only for US listings at the moment, but I'm pretty sure that's going to change in the future. It has to, doesn't it? For those in the US though, linking Ticketmaster and Eventbrite will get your date shown on a shelf below the videos, but only to people where it makes sense for them geographically. So they won't appear for me if you're playing a gig in Texas, for example, because I'm in Liverpool and that's miles away. It'd be just, it'd be stupid really, wouldn't it? And finally, we have the ability to make community posts with the community tab. Now, this is a feature that's normally locked off for users until they've reached 1,000 subscribers on their channel. I think that's right anyway. So it's a nice feature to get early. With this, you can post things like polls, videos, photos, anything really. And for some reason, for my first post, I decided to post this framed photo of somebody from The Apprentice that we had in the studio. I, I don't know. It's weird. This took about a week to become available for me after my channel was verified, so maybe just wait a while if yours isn't switched on yet. So is it worth doing for your channel? Now I know in the past when I did a previous video all about this, uh, there was a comment or two uh, basically talking about the negative effects of turning your or converting your channel into an official artist channel. And I think the main concerns were all about the fact that you couldn't get rid of these two rows, the ones I showed you before, which was the music videos and album uh, albums. And if they're the only downsides, I don't really see a problem with that because you can move them to the bottom. You know, it's the fact that you can't get rid of them, I suppose is an issue if you want to take complete control. So, you know, think about that before you do change. But if there are any of concerns and you've noted them, do let me know in the bottom there. I would love to know them. Um, but apart from that, I would say it's it's all win really because of all the other things I've talked about. You've got improved search visibility. You've got your know, concert tickets if you're in the US, and you've got those lovely profile images and biographies you can add. So pretty good. But why, may you ask, haven't I converted this channel to a official artist channel yet? Well, I'm a little bit apprehensive about turning this one yet because. I know I do put music on it, but I do other things too. I do these DIY musician guy videos, so I'm not sure yet because it's mostly 
DIY stuff and I do music and I probably will convert it, I probably will. Uh, what do you think? Let me know. It's an odd one, all of this anyway, really, because YouTube is saying it's great that we can have a single place for our fans to subscribe to and it'll merge all of these other channels into one, but YouTube is the one that kind of created this problem in the first place, which is weird. Anyway, I'm going to leave it as that. If you want to see more videos like this, please like and subscribe. And if I've ever helped you out, please consider looking at my Patreon page, where now you can get a shiny DIY hard badge. Uh, that's exclusive to the patrons. So do look at that. I will see you next time in another video. Bye-bye.